Howdy folks, I'm David from Figma.edu, and today we're going to talk about how to share your FigJam file with students. We're going to walk you through how to get that file link and send it directly to your students. I'll also be showing you how to force duplicate a copy for each student of a FigJam file. And lastly, I'll walk you through my absolute favorite, how to share FigJam files directly to Google Classroom using our Google Classroom integration. Let's go ahead and get started. So here I have an example of a file that I would like to get into the hands of my students. Let me go ahead and hover on up to the right hand corner of my screen and click on share. Once I do that, the share options will pop up. Now, before I click on copy link, I wanna make sure that my sharing settings are in line with my purposes. So I'm gonna click on this right here, which is who has access. I can click on only those invited and switch it on over to anyone. I can then toggle that between view and edit. Right now, I'm gonna go ahead and click it on view. I'm gonna click save and then copy this link. When this link is copied, students will be brought to this link right here. They can only view it. They can then click on the name of that file and click on duplicate. When they do this, they are getting their own duplicate of that file. It will say copy in parentheses. They can rename it if they'd like to, or just start working on the file directly. Now I'm back on my original file. For this next example, I'm going to bring down my URL bar. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a force copy of this link every time it is clicked on, whether a student's clicking on it or another staff member. To do that, you're gonna to go to the top URL. You're gonna highlight all of the text all the way up until this question mark. You are going to delete that, do your slash, and type in duplicate. Once you've typed in duplicate, you can copy this URL, and anytime that is clicked on, there will be a prompt that you now have a copy of this, and this is a student's copy or it's a staff member's copy. However they clicked on it, they're going to get their own forced copy of that file. Same as before, they can go and edit the name, edit everything here, and this is theirs. Now, if you or your school uses Google Classroom, you're in luck. I'm gonna go ahead and show you on another file how to use the Share to Google Classroom integration seamlessly. For this, I'm gonna go back to Files, I'm going to go to WordWork, and I'm going to click on Unit 1, Lesson 2 under WordWork. This is Alphabet Boxes. I will go to the top right of my file, click on Share, click on Share to Classroom, and here you have two options. You can just let students join and edit this file directly, but what I want is for a copy for each student. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this one. I'm then going to click on next, and a little window is going to pop up asking me to choose a class. I'll choose this class here. I'm going to choose an action, and I'm going to make this an assignment. Then I'll click go. After that, I will title the assignment, unit one, lesson two. I can fill in the instructions for this assignment. I can then change everything from whether it be to all students, certain students, the amount of points, the due date, always important to have that due date on here. Let's make it due next Monday. I will then go in and I'm gonna select the topic in which I'd like this to nest under. For me, this is going to be under WordWork, so I'll select that. The next thing I'll do is click Assign and Google Classroom and FigJam will do their magic and they will assign it directly to your Google Classroom. Now, for the first couple times of doing this, I'd always encourage you to click this View button to see now where that FigJam file lives. When I click on Classwork, I can look at this All Topics view or for the sake of clarity, I can go over to WordWork. I can then scroll down if I'm the teacher and I can see that I have assigned this right here. Now I only have one student in this test account on Google Classroom. You'll be seeing many more as you probably have a class size more than one. You can always go back and make edits to this assignment if you need to. But let's go and check out what the student sees when they get this in their Google Classroom. So for the student, they'll wanna click on the teacher's account in which the assignment has been given. They'll then hover on over to Classwork they can find it through their all topics view or for sake of clarity right now, let's go to WordWork. And I can see that my teacher has just assigned this unit one, lesson two in WordWork, which is due the 22nd. Let's go ahead and click on it and see what happens. As a student, when I click on this link, it's going to have that same blue action button up here saying that I have a copy for myself. I can go in and I can make some edits as I complete this task. And I can fill in the corresponding activity as my teacher has maybe shared in their directions. Now, one thing to note is when I go back here, let's say I'm a student and I log out and I just, you know, I go home. I need to find that file again. I don't even have to go back to figma.com to find that file. I can just go to Google Classroom. I can go over here, select the Google Classroom, exit out of everything, go over to Miss M's, select Classwork, go back to WordWork. I can find that assignment, click on this link, and here's the assignment I was just working on all saved in one space. Now, I wanna turn this in. Let's say I'm finished with it. If I'm the student, I can go in, I can copy this link, I can go back to Google Classroom, I can click on the assignment, 
I can click mark as done, but whoa, 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 Google Classroom is going to tell me I don't have anything attached. Let's hit cancel. Very responsible student. Click add or create. The student will click on link. They will copy the link that they just copied from their file that is theirs. They will hit control V or paste it from their clipboard and add the link. Once that is done loading, they'll click turn in, click turn in again, and they're good to go. Let's see how this looks and appears on the teacher facing Google Classroom. Here I am in that teacher's Google Classroom. Let's go back to all topics. Let's go on back over to word work. And I can see that a student has turned in unit one, lesson two. Let's click on turned in assignments. And here's the turned in assignment. When I click on this as the teacher, it'll open up in a new tab, that student's assignment where I can go in, I can make comments directly on the canvas. I can even add voice widgets to make my feedback a little more personal. Go down here to widgets, select widgets, type in voice, drag a voice widget onto the canvas, and I can leave a voice memo right there for the students. Now I'm gonna bring us back to figma.com to show you something important, or at least something you should know about. When you add a FigJam file from your Figma account to Google Classroom using the integration, when students make copies of that, the copy will land itself inside of the team and the project it originally came from. What that means is you could potentially have a lot of student files making their way into your projects that you don't really want clogging your original files. So what I do, this is not necessary, but I made a new project called student work. What I will do from then is take all of my students' files that are created, duplicated from Google Classroom, and simply drag them into student work like this. And they will no longer appear inside of my project where my original files come from, and they'll just be cataloged into student work. This is again, not necessary, but for me as a teacher really helped clean things up and make it a little more streamlined finding my files versus where the students are. And for finding and grading student files, I'd always encourage you just go to Google Classroom and use the management of the organization there to grade, to add feedback, add comments, and so forth. As we end this video, let me go ahead and summarize what we learned. We learned how to send the file link directly to students, we also learned how to force duplicate by manipulating editing the file URL, and we finished it out with looking at all of the fun and fancy features found in the Google Classroom Big Jam integration. I hope you found this video helpful, and happy jamming everyone!